Hello, YouTube world. How are you doing? I uh, am Marley Bird. I am the owner of the Marley Bird YouTube channel. And I'm here today to talk to you about the My First Sweater Knit Along week six. Now, I've decided to go ahead and do this as a live broadcast instead of recording it and releasing the video because I have, in my opinion, I feel like the live question and answer sessions I've done for this knit along have really been well received and I've been able to answer any questions and demonstrate anything specifically that you guys need. So, with the knowledge that many of you are so scared to see your sweater, I thought it would be it would be a good idea for me to do this live to see my my sample um, swatches live for you, and then that way, if there's something I missed or a question you might have, I can answer it live on air because you never know there might be other people out there who are asking the same question. I do have my computer right next to me, and I have the pop up chat ready to go. So I can say hello to all of you um, from Texas, from, gosh, many of you are here uh, just saying hello and you're so nervous. No reason to be nervous, guys. You got this. I promise it's really not that difficult and we're going to be using what's called the mattress stitch and it's simply something magical when you watch it happen because it's, it's virtually invisible. Um, a lot of fun to do. So the first thing I'm going to ask here uh, for all of you is I want to make sure my sound quality is okay. Uh, so if you don't mind, if you're watching live, if you could post in the little chat area that everything sounds okay and you can see everything all right. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we are good to go here because it looks like everything everything's good on my end. Um, and I'm going to say hello while you guys are saying that you can hear me. So hello to Julie and Candace and Chris and Lala and Suzanne and Sharon and Kathleen and Linda. So many of you are here to learn how to seam your sweater together. Um, and you guys are telling me that the sound is great. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm curious how many of you actually got to the point where you're ready to finish your sweater. Uh, of hands. <laughs> I know that in the group on Facebook, there are so many of you who have been posting pictures of the back, the front, your two sleeves, and you're, you're listing how shocked you are that you were able to get this far and that you're so scared to seam everything together. But I'm telling you, that's like the easiest part. You've got it. It's, it's nothing from here on out. Um, I know that there's one lady there on the Facebook group that actually finished two sweaters in this time frame. She knits super fast. I I did not. I am not done with mine yet, but that's okay because I am working, as you guys know, on a different sort of sample so that I can release mine. I have some other sweaters getting made right now as well, and I plan on releasing them all together as a set. So mine is coming. Uh, what we will do today is I'm going to use my handy swatches that I made for week one. See, because I'm resourceful like that. And we're going to learn how to seam together our sweater pieces uh, and, and move right along. So let me answer any questions here. Um, let's see here. Some of you are saying you're not, you're not done with yours, but that's okay. Like I said, it's all right. If you guys are doing a raise of hands. That makes me so excited. And some of you are saying you're so happy you finished the sleeves last night. You're ready to get this together. And I am glad you guys are all here. This is great. Chris Lopez, thank you so much for moderating in the group. I appreciate that immensely. Um, you can help me answer any questions as we go along if there happens to be something that I miss as I am seeing. Me. All right, guys, are you ready? <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> All right, so let's start off here. With week five, when I did the video, somebody happened, happened to ask, should we block our pieces before we seam them together? Um, and I answered that, yeah, it's, it's always a good idea to give your yarn sort of a spa day, very similar to what we did in week one when I washed and blocked my swatch. Remember that? I just simply washed my swatch, pinned it out, and let it dry. That's exactly what you would do with your pieces if you want to. I highly, I recommend it. I think it's a really good idea. But um, if you're like, 
living on the edge and you just want to get it done, I understand that as well. Um, so you could do that. But to make the seaming process easier, it's better if you wash and block your, your, your pieces. So that way they're all the correct size, all the stitches are laid out nicely and everything looks good. I'm not going to go over the blocking process again in this video because I've talked about it in week five. I showed you how to do it in week one and I do have standalone videos for how to block. So I'll make sure to go back and add the little I button right up there in the corner. So if you want to watch those videos, you can do that. But um, that's the first step. Once all of your pieces are washed and blocked or once your pieces are done, we then can move on to seaming it together. And when we seam the pieces together, we're going to start off by seaming at the shoulder first. All right, so here we go. Let's get my little instructions here all set up and away we go. So I have my two little swatches right here. Uh, if you remember, this is the one that was Chic Sheep. This one's Amore. And we're going to pretend these are the front and the back. I like that they're different colors. That way you can better see what I'm doing here on the video. Um, tell me, guys, if the video is close enough for you, if I need to zoom in at all uh, as we go along. The first step that you would do is you would take a look at the schematic that I added to the instructions. Now I will add those to week six instructions as well because that's basically all week six instructions are is the schematic and saying the mattress stitch and then this video. But you already have the schematic. It's been in every week's instructions up to this point on my website, okay? So as you've been getting the week instructions, it always has the same details and it has a schematic there. And the schematic shows you the different measurements for different parts of the sweater. So one of the things that you would want to do is you would take the schematic measurement and I'm getting my little removable stitch markers here and you want to figure out how wide the neck portion needs to be. So let's pretend um, these are the front and the back, remember? And let's say that our neck portion is supposed to be 10 inches or whatever it may be, okay? So you would take your tape measure, take your tape measure, and it gives you the full measurement across your entire, your entire front, okay? So you would figure out what portion of the front is that 10 inches for your neck opening, okay? So once you would figure that out, you would take a marker and you wanna mark it, okay? And what this marker is gonna do, I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just doing this as a rough because obviously this is not the same size as the sweater. Once you have this marked, that's going to let you know that you're only going to seam the shoulders up to that marker and then from the outside up to that marker. We will leave this portion open. Don't forget to do the same thing for the opposite as well so that way you don't get off track. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five. Let's grab another one. One, two, three, four, five. Five, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. So much fun counting on camera. I know that's like riveting television. <laughs> okay, so we have this marked off. Any questions so far? I'm going to look here and just make sure nothing is incorrect here. Looks good. Everybody is with me so far. So what we have here is we have a neck opening and we have markers placed to give us an indication of where we are going to stop any seaming that we do. Now what we want to do is we want to match up our stitches one for one and have them come together right up here at the top using what's called the mattress stitch. Now, you want to use the yarn you used for your project when you're seaming up this sweater, okay? But I'm going to use a different colored yarn so that way you can better see the stitches as I'm seaming them so you can see what's going on. Um, but you want to use the same colored yarn. <coughs> Excuse me. And for those of you who have a length of yarn still attached to this portion of your sweater that you could use to seam up this portion, you can do that. You can use what's already attached or you can add a new um, uh, thread in to seam it up. Totally up to you. Either way works. I didn't tell you one way or the other. So uh, if you have a length of yarn that's still attached that you can use to seam it up, use that. If not, let's reattach. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to reattach. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your length of yarn is long enough to go the distance of your shoulder. 
So the way I go about that is I take my length of yarn and I would lay it across whatever my shoulder length would be. And then, so let's, it would be about, about that much, right? And then I want to triple that length. If I triple that length, that should give me more than enough yarn to make it across the distance that I'm seaming. I always give myself a little bit extra just to make sure, but that should give you more than enough yarn to work across the distance of your seam. You guys with me so far? Awesome. Let's see here, where do you find the videos before this live chat? They we, will be on YouTube. Yes, this video is always on YouTube, guys, so you'll be able to find it no problem. All right, so once you have your length of yarn, you wanna take a bent tip tapestry needle. Do you guys see this? The benefit of the bent tip tapestry needle is literally the bent tip. It allows you to get in to the stitches and bring up the, the stitch that you're gonna be working in. And it just really is super helpful with that bent tip. You can thread your yarn into that bent tip tapestry needle. And away we go. Before I jump in, I wanna make sure there aren't any questions and make sure, am I close enough to, uh, as far as my camera work, is it close enough? I'm gonna just check here real quick. It looks like everybody is saying they're excited, they think it looks good, and they're ready to go, which is good. All right, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna come down just ever so slightly to make sure that I'm nice and close, and hopefully I'm still in focus. All right, so here I am. And I'm going to take my bent tip tapestry needle here, and I'm gonna start right down here at this edge. And what I'm gonna do is I want to work across all of these stitches, okay? So I'm lining up stitches for stitches, okay? So I am going to insert my needle right in between those two stitches, all right? So I'm just gonna insert my needle and pull up. I'm gonna come over here to this side I'm going to insert my needle and pull up. So far, when I come back to the other side, can you see how it's going to look like a figure eight? Can you, can you see that? Like it looks like a figure eight? Because I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to come up where I came out originally, where I came up originally. I'm going to give that a pull. So what I've done here is I have attached my yarn to the project itself. Again, if you already have your yarn attached because you left a nice, a nice long tail, you don't have to do this part. But now my yarn is attached and I'm ready to match up my seam. So what I wanna do here is I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to go underneath each stitch and pick up between those, or like pick up the V, like go underneath the V like I'm going behind it and pull my yarn through. Then I go to the corresponding stitch on the opposite side and do the same thing, all right? And this is with the right side facing, guys, okay? Come back over here. You're gonna go in where you came out. You know what, I, I didn't go over enough on that one. Let me undo this one. I should have went over one more. Did I do that right? Hold on, maybe I did. See, this is part of the, this is part of the process. Okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm right. Second guessing myself because we're live. I want to make sure everything's correct. All right, so I'm here. I come over here. I go into the corresponding and pull up. So this is just what I accidentally or not accidentally what I took out. Come back to the other side. Come in where you came out, and come up and pull up a stitch. Over here, in where you came out pull up your stitch in where you came out I say pull up your stitch but that's not right like pull up your needle pull the the needle through can you see what I'm doing here as I'm doing this notice that my green yarn see how it resembles an actual knit stitch can you see how it resembles a knit stitch it seems a little tricky here, guys, as you get going because we have this pattern stitch up here, but we finished off with this knit row. So you still, it's just knit stitches. You're still picking up and working knits. 
but can you see how that looks like it's a knit stitch so far? Okay. I want you to see this. This is the magical part of the whole mattress stitch. After you get going a little ways, you can then go ahead and grab both ends of your yarn and pull so that that stitch tightens up. And what you're going to notice is that the, the edge here is coming together nice and clean. And on the inside, that's the raw edge that we didn't work into, and so you're getting a nice seam there. And that seam is what's gonna hold the weight of your sweater on your shoulders. Remember when I said this is why I didn't wanna do a sweater in the round? I wanted, I wanted a nice good seam at the shoulders, that way we could hold the weight of our fabric because it's oversized. This seam here is nice and big and bulky, and it's gonna be able to hold that weight. And as we do this mattress stitch and pull these stitches together, it really allows our, our stitches to look look nice and clean. All right. So I'm going to keep going here. And I'm still remember you go in where you came out, come across. See, I'm picking up like the V. I'm not really picking it up. I'm putting my needle behind it. And then as I pull my yarn through, I'm threading it behind. Then I come over here. I'm going in where I came out, going behind the stitch and then pulling my needle out. You see how this works? And you're just going stitch for stitch. This is the convenient thing about having the front and back having the same number of stitches because we can go stitch for stitch. And that brings a really good point here that I can bring up. There are some of you who mentioned that you might get to a point where you forgot to do the make ones at any point, either on the front or the back. So when you get up to the shoulder portion, you might have um, a different number of stitches on the front and the back. What you would need to do, what I would do, if it's just one or two stitches, I would probably let those one or two stitches just fall into the neck area. And because they're never going to show, they're just going to kind of disappear as long as it's not like more than two stitches, right? Um, and then that way you have stitch for stitch on the shoulders. I think that is what I would do. If you want to keep the neck stitches the exact same and kind of fiddle around with what's going on at the shoulders, there will be a point where you'll have to do like two stitches on one side to one stitch on the other side um, to even it up. It's just, it's just a matter of finessing the seam together. But to me, I would keep it to where the seam edge at the shoulder is the same on both the front and the back and just let that extra stitch or wherever it is um, land in the neck. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to touch the microphone. Land in the front or the back of the neck area. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let's finish this up because why not? I'm here. I'm trying to show you guys. Again, I'm just going in where I came out and I'm coming up. All right, so it's, it's that V section here. Here's my purl bump. See the V right above the purl bump? And giving that a pull. In where we came out. And when you do the mattress stitch like this, you're lining up the, the stitches, right? But it does give you a half a stitch jog between the two, just so you know. Um, that's perfectly normal. That's just the nature of the beast. But it should be all right. All right, so I'm right to where my markers are. So I would call that good. So I'm going to remove my markers. That way you can see what I'm going to do here. Just as when I started and I did that figure eight, I want to do the same thing here. So I'm going to go in where I came out and I'm going to pop up. And I'm going to go in where I came out. I'm going to pop up. And oh, you know what? I should pull that together. Let me pull this tight before I seam that all rolled closed because I want to make sure that's closed. There we go. Whoopsie. <laughs> all right. So make sure you pull that closed. In where I came out, in where I came out. Now I have this nice um yarn here but here's the greatest thing ever okay so i'm going to pop this to the inside when i turn this around i have this nice seam here that i can use to tuck in my tail so all i need to do is i can just weave my tail in just like so just to make sure it's nice and tucked in i would do it a couple more there and then do the same here but then your tail is nice and tucked in everything is nice and seamed together and i want you to notice even though i used a green yarn or a mint colored yarn you can't see it right there where the seam is right and that's because of the the way we do the mattress stitch if we pull it apart really far you can kind of glimpse it in there it's so invisible but you can see right here that is the beautiful mattress stitch for the shoulder. You would then go ahead, rotate your work, 
and do the same over here along this edge, okay? So that would leave the neck opening open. Pretty cool, right? I, I just think that's just so magical when those two pieces come together. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna answer some of your questions here. I know there's a delay in my video, so some of you aren't, aren't even to this point yet as I'm talking, and so I'm going to look at some of the questions and ask you if you have any other questions regarding the shoulder seam particularly at this point. So we did stitch for stitch, mattress stitch, okay? That's what we just seamed together. And let's see here, Candace Gluner, Gluner is saying, so glad she's doing this video. Um, because I never would understand the stitch into the row or not the bind off. Correct. You don't want to work into the bind off. You want to go typically into the row right before the bind off. The bind off is, is it's your seam. That's, that's goes on the inside. That's what's going to hold the weight. You definitely want to go on the other side of the bind off. Okay. It's the row before the bind off. Um, and that's, that's pretty common throughout. Even when we do the mattress stitch along row for row, you never actually work into the row right at the edge of your work. You always work one row in because you want the edge of your work. That's your, that's your selvage edge, right? That's your, that's your seam that goes on the inside. And coincidentally, for those of you who are curious, that's why in most patterns, um, you'll see that you never work your decreases right at the edge stitch. You always do it like one or two stitches in from the edge. And that's because that edge stitch is your selvage stitch. And here's Another thing, for those of you that were wondering why were we doing those make ones after we did the ribbing, it was so that we had that selvage stitch because the pattern was actually written so that we kept the ribbing portion open so it was like a vent. You weren't supposed to ever um, seam together the ribbing portion. Now on the sample, Caitlin, Caitlin just didn't pay attention to me and she did seam the ribbing portion together, but technically it's not supposed to be. So could you, could you seam the ribbing portion together? Absolutely. Caitlin did. So why not? <laughs> um, but it's not meant to be seamed together. Remember many of you were asking me earlier on if the ribbing portion was going to pull in on you. Well, that was why I left the vents originally was so that it doesn't pull in because I don't like stuff pulled in around my tummy either. So I, I totally get you. I feel you. Um, so there was a whole lot of information there. The, the first stitch along the edge and the bind off is usually the salvage, so you don't ever work into those. And that's why the decreases or increases are usually in patterns written at least one or two stitches in from the edges. And then when we did the make ones after the ribbing, we did that so that we, ha we had stitches for the salvage. All right, so there's a lot of questions answered there. And let me go on and answer some more. Um, crafting with Lene is saying my favorite part of the mattress stitch is probably the pulling it together because it's like magic. I feel like I'm Harry Potter. It's just, it's so magical. <laughs> um, let's see here. And we have, oop, the, my, my screen scrolled on me. Karen Barton says, very helpful. I didn't know about the salvage area. Well, good. That's nice to know that I helped you out there. Um, Honeybear64 says, good morning from Texas. My knitting skills are so bad that I purchased a knitting machine. Oh, that's all right. I, I would like to know where you purchased it, actually. I could use one. Not because my knitting skills are bad, just because I could use it for... Um, getting some things done. Amanda Taylor, so glad you did this. Watched a video that showed doing it in the bind off. Yeah, that's, I don't know why somebody would do it in the bind off. You don't want to do that. Every, every class I've ever taken, every book I've ever read, every, um, you know, knitter I've ever known has told me, you know, we've, cause we talk about things like this, all my friends, you don't do it in the bind off. You do it in one stitch edge. One of the, if you guys ever want to check out videos of somebody who is an expert knitter and knows her stuff, uh, Patty Lyons, she has a YouTube video or YouTube, um, classes, YouTube uh, channel here on YouTube. <laughs> How many times can I say YouTube? And she's fantastic. Patty Lyons is amazing. So whenever in doubt, she's another good person to refer to. Uh, she's really great. Let's see here. No questions. Just a mighty big thank you. Um, let's see here. Paula Harrison says, fabulous. So finished. I always did the bind off. It's much nicer this way. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. And it's so easy, right? I don't understand why people do the whip stitch. And that's when people will do the bind off, you know, they'll just whip stitch the, the seam together and it looks 
whip stitched when it's so easy just to do something like this and it comes together so nice and clean and it's polished and finished. All right, so now that we have the shoulder joined, this is where we would want to join our sleeve. And the trick here, when we join the sleeve to our garment, we are going to be joining vertical and horizontal st um, stitches together. So we're gonna go for rows and stitches to join them up. Um, so I'm gonna pause here just for a second so you guys can collect yourself with this. Uh, Kitty Club 99 is saying, could I link to her? I will add a link to Patty Lyons uh, in the video description box of this video after, after it's done so that way you can um, find Patty. Tell her I sent you because she's pretty darn amazing. Let's see here. Um, okay, so when we're working with the sleeve, obviously we're working with sleeve stitches that we worked straight up and down, right? But those sleeve stitches have to fit onto our our body of our sweater, and we're gonna join it at the rows. So we have stitches coming this way to join up to rows going this way. When we do that, what you will find is you will typically have more rows than you have stitches. So unlike the shoulder where we had a stitch for stitch all the way across, when we work with the sleeve, and this is for sleeves like we're doing with the drop shoulder or if you're working set in sleeves, whatever it is, Whenever you're combining stitches to rows, you have to um, fiddle and fudge and manipulate a little bit um, how many uh, bars or stitches, it's usually bars you work into, to make sure that the fabric lays as flat as possible. That'll make sense here as we're going along, but the, the main thing to take away from this is, as you're working along on the sleeve, the best thing to do is just kind of stop, pause, take a look at it, make sure everything looks good about every inch or so, just to make sure everything is on track, and so it might be that you have to use up two rows on the next stitch, compared to one stitch from the sleeve and then go back to one, 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 and then do two and then one, 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 and then two, whatever it may be. Um, that'll make more sense here as we're jumping in. Okay. You guys ready for the sleeves? I'm pretty sure you are. I'm looking here at the questions and here we go. Oh, one thing, uh, somebody is saying, I always did the whip stitch, which I know now is why I hate seaming. Yeah, the whip stitch is fun and it works, but if you want something to be clean and finished, this is the way to go. All right, so here we go. Let's do ourselves a little sleeve here. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna seam this side together because I don't feel like you guys need me to see, you don't need to see that, you just need to do this part here. And I just put together a little tiny swatch here because you don't need a full sleeve. So I just have a little tiny swatch. And what I did was I didn't do anything in particular, I just have some stockinette because at the top of your sleeve is just stockinette. So I want to be able to match up the stockinette to the rows that we have here on our garment. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark the halfway point of my sleeve. All right, so I'm just doing that by folding it in half. You could mathematically figure that out and mark it, whatever you wanna do, just mark the halfway point, okay? That halfway point is what's going to go right here at the center seam of your shoulder. All right, so we wanna make sure that that is going to join at that center seam. So one thing you could do is at the halfway point, actually clip it to the shoulder itself, just so that it stays in place. Okay, you with me so far? The other thing to do, as you set this in place, on your swatches, or on your, not your swatches, on your sweater, you already have the marked off points of where your sleeve goes. Remember, we marked it, we had three inches of ribbing, and then we did 15 inches, and then I had you mark something. That marker that I had you do on the sides of your garment, that's going to be where this side of the sleeve meets up and this side of the sleeve meets up. Pretty convenient, right? So you already know where your sleeve is gonna meet up. Because I'm working with swatches, I don't have that luxury. So I'm just going to pin this in place, roughly. Make sure I'm not overextending it by any means. And let's just pin this one here. I love removable stitch markers. Those of you who have watched the channel for a long time know I love stitch markers. I think they're so useful. 
All right, so here we are. I have my sweater or my sleeve pinned to my sweater. You can see here we have these rows. We have, or I'm sorry, we have stitches over here. We have rows and then we can seam it up. Now I did leave a nice long uh, tail here that I could use to begin seaming this up if I want to. Um, you guys want me to do that? Should I do that so I can show you? If, if you did not leave a nice long tail, once again, you would rejoin it with the figure eight just like we did there. But let's go ahead and use my tail since I already have it. Now, one thing about using your tail when you're gonna seam up your sleeve is that puts it, like your tail is right down here at this point. When I do sleeves, I usually like to start right at the center, right here, and then go towards the armpit and then come back here to the center and work towards the armpit. And the reason is, as I'm fudging uh, my work together, if there happens to be a big glob or anything unsightly that I miss and I need to fudge it in, then it's in the armpit area, so it's hidden. So typically, that's what I would like to do is join my yarn here, work this direction, and then work this direction. But because my yarn is over here and already attached, we'll just go straight across and we'll just keep it as even as possible. How about that? So I'm going to rotate my work on the side because this is easier for me. Some people prefer to work this way. I prefer to work this way. All right, it's just, it's just a preference thing. You can do whatever you want. My yarn is already attached and I have my marker there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my marker out because it's hard for you to see anything with the marker attached there. And I still need to attach my yarn to my column over here, my, my body. Now I wanna point out here, stockinette naturally rolls, right? We have this natural roll here. And I have the first stitch is what's really rolling under. See that there? That there is my first stitch. I do not wanna work into that first stitch, okay? I really like to think of, so you know we have these stitches here, it's the V. If I were to spread apart this V, you can see, see how there's those the columns or bars in there? Those are actually the pearl bumps on the opposite side. Those are the, the bars inside the column. Can you guys all see that, the bars inside the column? What I like to do is when I seam something together, when we do the mattress stitch, you will go in between this column of stitches, so this in between this stitch here, and you will be pulling up those bars between the stitches. Sometimes you'll pull up two bars and that would pull up two rows. Sometimes it'll be one bar. It will all depend on what you need to pull up to make sure that your sleeve is even. And this is the part I was talking about. You have more rows than you have stitches. So sometimes you'll have to pull up two bars to make sure that you are using up enough rows to accommodate the number of stitches you have. Does that make sense? But what we are going to do is we don't wanna work between these two, not this one and this one. I wanna come all the way over here to this column and go between there. And I wanna stay along this column of stitches here, this, these rows, I wanna stay in that column as best as I can. Given that we don't have any increases or any sort of shaping done right here, we should be perfectly okay and you shouldn't have any issues working up this column of stitches. If we did have some shaping, like on the sleeves, we'll get to that later, um, that's where you will kind of jog over your needle a little bit to make sure that you're still going up as close to that column as possible because you'll have either, um, you'll have fewer or more stitches along the way, but you just wanna try and keep it as even and consistent as possible all right so right here are you guys with me so far all right it looks like most of you are right here with me I'll pull up all right so I'm going to match this up and I'm going to start right here so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to come underneath I'm going to come up in the column that I want to use all right and this is going this is like my figure eight join and I'm going to come back over here I'm gonna come up, can you see the stitch right there? I'm gonna come up right there. And so I've joined the two together, all right? So there's my, I don't have an extra tail because I'm using my tail to seam. I'm gonna come back over here where I came out. 
I'm going to insert my needle and, and I'm going to come up and I'm just going to pull up one bar here to start. This is why I like the bent tip needle. It makes it easier to be able to pull up. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull up one bar and pull that through. I'm going to come over here to this side. I'm going to go in where I came out and working around those stitches again, just like we did when we did our um, shoulder, working around the stitches and pull it through. Come back over here, working in this column. I'm going to go in where I came out and then I'm going to pull up, I'm just going to pull up one bar again. So I'm going to pull up one bar. Make sure this is coming through here. Come back to the sleeve, go in where you came out, go around your stitch again, just like before. I'm not sure, what's the right terminology? Around, under? I'm not exactly sure, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? All right, so I can see here, I'm not quite using up enough of my rows for the stitches. See how my work is over here, but, and then my yarn is coming out over here. So when I come back over here to this time, I'm gonna go in where I came out, and this time I'm gonna pop up and bring up two bars. And what that will do is it should bring my work back up to where I'm right across. See that, see how it's right across? You all see that so far? Is it harder to see with everything being the same color this time? I'm still creating these stitches. See how we have these nice stitches just like we did when we did the seam right up here at the shoulder? And just like we did at the shoulder, when I give this a pull, it's gonna pull it together nice and neat. And when it pulls together nice and neat, this row here of stitches is gonna butt up really nicely with this row here of rows, and it's going to be beautiful. So I'm gonna look here, make sure you guys are see. Move over means, okay, so far I'm following you. Okay, somebody asked, what does jog mean? That means it's just like if you were to jog over one, one row of stitches or one stitch over. Um, if we are working in this column, I would take my needle and just shift it over to the next column and begin working up that column. Um, and that's usually only when you have to deal with any sort of shaping going on in what your garment is. We'll talk about that when we get to the sleeves. Don't worry, I'll, I'll mention that. Let's see here. Um, everybody is saying that they get it, they understand, that's cool. Okay, are you ready? This is like this is the cool part. This is the part that makes me feel like a wizard. Because when I pull this together, right now it looks a little sloppy. And just a heads up, you don't want to wait to do this to the very end. You want to do this a little bit along the way. We just give this a pull and it pulls everything nice and neat right up to that. And see how it's not bunching, it looks nice and clean, everything is really good. And that's because I did one bar, one bar, and then I noticed that it, I wasn't using up enough of my rows, so I did two bars to jump over. Can you see that? So as I continue on, I wanna make sure I come back over here. You always go in where you came out, and then go underneath the stitch and up. Again, the bent tip tapestry needle is awesome, guys. I'll put a link to it. Like I use, I use these ones and I love them, but I'll put a link so that you can see where to get them. I think they're great. Give that a pull. I'm gonna come up here again. You wanna make sure you're still going through the same column. Go in where you came out. And I'm gonna go back to where I'm just picking up one bar. And I'll do that along the way until I see that maybe it's, it's I'm not using enough enough rows again and then I'll make adjustments. All right, so let me just keep going here. As you get going along, it's kind of rhythmic and relaxing. Okay, I can see I'm starting to get too, too much again, so I'm gonna pick up two bars. My yarn keeps getting caught and I'm back to even, so then I can go ahead, I can give these a pull. I mean, look how clean that is, look how pretty. I mean, seriously, that is so pretty. And I'm doing this live, so you guys, you guys out there that are all nervous about your sweater, try doing it live on camera. <laughs> um, 
I mean, this is this is so pretty. Let's keep going here. I want to keep going and I want to get you past the the portion up here at the shoulder. Let's see here uh, if there's any questions. Julie uh, Condon says, I will never whip stitch a seam again. No, you won't. This is this is great. All right. So I'm going to go in where I came out. Always go in where you came out and then come across. Remember, you use more rows. And okay, here we are. I'm getting to the part where I'm I'm in the pattern stitch at the shoulder. So I just want to make sure I'm still only picking up one bar, but this bar happens to be my pearl bump, right? Remember I told you the bars are actually the pearl bumps on the other side. So my bar right here is my pearl bump. So I'm just going to pick that up. I'm gonna come back over here. Come across. All right, I'm getting to the point where I'm almost to my shoulder here where my stitch marker is I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm just going to move it a little bit so that everything is still held together but just not in the way all right okay usually I would have tucked in that green edge but or that green tail let's get that green tail out of the way okay here we are. So I just came out there. So I'm going to come in here and you just go back and forth, back and forth. Come up. Am I still even? I think I'm pretty even. Grab my pearl bump. Come here. And I am to my seam. So right here, I'm going to treat my seam just like before, only here is the trick. You remember when I told you that, oh, I got something in my eye. Um, remember when I told you that when we were seaming up stitch for stitch that it does make everything shift over just a uh, half a stitch. It makes it sort of jog over. So when we come up along this edge, we want to make sure we're still working along this column of stitches right here. Okay. So you just want to make sure that when you're coming up, you're going to have to sort of go into the seam area and finagle it, okay? But you just wanna make sure it's coming together nice and clean. I'm gonna pull this so that we can get it a good look. All right, so far we're good. I'm gonna remove that marker because I don't think I need it anymore. All right, now, remember, we were over here, we were in the column where I have my pearls. So over here, I wanna make sure I'm still in my column where my pearls are, okay? So I wanna make sure I'm still going along so I came out there, let me go make sure I have my point here where I came out. I think that's right there. Oh, nope, I went too far. So if you go too far, it's just undo it. It's really, it's not the end of the world. Everything is bound off at this point. So even if you have to undo the entire seam and restart, it's okay. Nothing's gonna fall away. You don't have to worry about drop stitches or anything. It's hard for me to see. I gotta come apart. Oh, there we are. There it is. There's that little sucker. Come right there and up. All these tails. Oh, that's why I like weaving in my tails before I do any of this. Oop, make sure you don't get yourself a knot. All right, and then I'll come up here. Make sure I'm still working down this row. So there's my pearl bump. Can you see my pearl bump? Come up, come back, and across. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna go a couple. I know I'm starting to get a little off. Let's see, in there, and out. So on and so forth. Can you see? I'm gonna give this a pull, because this is like magic. And look how clean that is. Look how pretty that is. Actually, I don't like, I don't like how this is dipping down there a little bit. I think I'm gonna come up one. So I'm gonna undo those. So this is, I mean, this is a prime example. So can you see what I mean, what I'm seeing here? I don't like what I'm looking at right there. I don't like that. So I'm gonna undo those and just play around. 
Maybe I'll come right here. Maybe I went over one too many. I, I should have been right there. But this is all, and then I would just pick this out. This is all you do. Pick it out until it looks good. And start again. Just remember, this is the top of your, your sweater. So you just want to make sure it looks good. If there's a place you're going to fudge at all, it would be in the armpit area. So it would be, remember, down here or down here. So I picked out those that I didn't like. Let's put this in again and let's do this again. So I want there. So I'm going to, this is going to be, this is going to be me jogging. Instead of going down where those pearl bumps were, so I was pearl bumps here, pearl bumps here. I don't like that. So I'm actually going to jog over. I'm going to try this and see if that looks better. So this is the part where I'm talking about like finessing things a little bit and making sure it works for what yours looks like. All I'm doing, I'm still, it's the same thing, same process. I just jogged over a little bit to see if that lines up better. Let me come here a little bit and then we can pull this together and see how it looks. I think that's going to look better. Oh yeah, that looks way better. Can you see that? So all I did is I jogged over ever so slightly and I made it so that the line was a little bit more continuous. And that was because of the half stitch off over here um, when I did my seam here and that's just the nature of the beast. But now you can see how you can fix any sort of like little mistake or, or flub up or whatever it may be. All right, you got that so far? I'm gonna finish this off down to the end so that way I can seam up these sides and pretend that it's a full sweater so you can see how to seam it up. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna ask you guys, um, have you enjoyed making the sweater? How many of you are surprised how easy it was to make this sweater? Are you shocked? Are you, are you like, oh my gosh, like I don't know why I've been waiting so long to make a sweater? Or at the same time, are those of you, are there some of you out there wondering, okay, this sweater was really easy, but what if I have to do a set in sleeve sweater or maybe a raglan sweater? Are those easier? Are those harder? Like, what are some of your questions you have? I am curious. Um, somebody just asked, where do I find the measurements with the neck, neck measurement, the schematic? It's on the first section of each one of the patterns. You'll see that it has all the pattern details. There's the list for yarn, your needles, your notions, and then there's a full range of the finished measurement and then the schematic is all right there. And that's on the Marley Bird website, but that is also later on when this becomes a PDF, it will be on the PDF as well. All right, so I'm down here at the end guys and just like before, I just wanna make sure that I have everything seam together here, pull together, let me pull that nice and tight again. There's my sleeve. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? I love the way the stitches all line up along the row. I think that's so pretty. Once again, we can turn this over. We have this nice seam here. Again, this sh shoulder or this shoulder seam and this sleeve seam, it's holding all of the weight. So that's really handy um, when we're dealing with a fabric that's, that's heavy, um, an oversized sweater. Um, I think it's important to have sleeve or seams so that way it can hold weight. So I'm just gonna tuck these in just like so. So you could tuck in your sleeve seam just because I wanna have it out of the way. Now, let me come back down this way because I wanna talk to you about something else. Those of you who left your, your tail super long, one thing that you can do is you can use your tail for the sleeve just like you did, but then you can also use it to seam the side of your sweater or um, 
the, the sleeve part here. So if you wanted to, we could continue on and use that to seam the side of the sweater. My only caution and hesitation with that is if our yarn is up here and we're seaming our sweater down along this way and we get down here and there's an area that needs to be fudged, then it's no longer up in the armpit, right? It's down here by the ribbing, really public. So I tend to not go this route, but I know that some of you will ask if you can, could you? Yeah, you absolutely could. You just have to be really careful that everything is nice and clean. Um, but I prefer to start down here and work up towards the armpit. And then even on the sleeve, I'll work out here on the sleeve and work towards the armpit again. So that way, if there's any sort of fudging that has to be done, it's all in the armpit because then it's not visible to the public. All right. So let me, let me transfer this over to all of you and see what you have to say. Oh gosh, let's see. Some of you are so happy. Um, it says, not my first sweater, but I have enjoyed making this. Um, happy it was easy, but I'm wondering for future sweater patterns. Penny, I agree with you. Uh, the good news is I plan on sticking around here. So if you stick with me here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel, you'll learn how to make more sweaters and uh, we'll, we'll take an adventure and make all sorts of different sweaters if you're willing to stick with me and do that with me. I think that would be fun. Chris G says, I was absolutely shocked I could do this and that I was uh, and that I will actually be able to wear it. That makes me happy. Suzanne Jennings, Marley, you're such a fabulous teacher. Thank you for walking us through step by step by step by step. <laughs> you're welcome, Suzanne. Thank you for the compliment. Um, let's see here. I found this pattern very easy and enjoyable to make. And but she has a problem getting it finished on time. That's all right. There's it's not a contest. You got this. You got this. Regina, I loved making the sweater. It was easier than I thought it would be. I would like to learn how to knit set in sleeve patterns and a true round neckline. I those are some of my favorite ones. So uh, stick with me and we'll we'll make some of those. I have a beautiful pattern that I just had, um, I just designed and just had made with a V neck and set in sleeves that is gorgeous and it has stripes and it's, it's so pretty. It's a replica of one of my favorite sweaters that I bought at a store. Um, I had it like remade with measurements that I wanted and using my own yarn and it's, it's so pretty. I can't wait to show you guys. Let's see here. Uh, everybody's saying thank you and they love the sweater. That makes me, that makes me so happy. Cool, 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 cool. All right, guys. So the next step is doing the mattress stitch row for row. So we've done um, stitch for stitch. We've done stitch for row. And now we're going to do row for row, which is really easy because just as when we did stitch for row and we picked up those bars, that's all we're going to do when we're seaming up the body of our sweater. We're going to seam up the row for row and we're going to pick up two bars at a time and seam it up along the side. So let's go ahead and jump in and do that. So we're back here to our sample. Isn't it interesting that you do all of this with the right sides facing you? Like everything's on the right side. So when you're done seaming it all together, you'll be able to fold it in half. Da, 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 da. And you are already on your way to start having a really cool sweater. Okay. So as I mentioned, I like to seam my sweater up. I will usually start down at the cuff of the sleeve and sleeve towards the arm or seam towards the armpit. And then I'll cut my yarn off and then I will rejoin down at the bottom of my sweater and seam up towards the armpit. Once again, it's so that way if there's any fudging that needs to happen, it's all in the armpit area, making it invisible to the public. Okay. So remember what I said, when we, uh, when I designed this sweater, I made it so that way the ribbing portion did not get seamed together. Now, Caitlin, when she made the sweater, she seamed it together, which is fine, but I am going to show you how to do it without seaming the ribbing portion. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. So what we will do is just like before, I'm going to fold this up out of the way. We are going to match up our front and back and go row for row all the way up to the armpit. 
This is another area that if you need to do any sort of altercation where maybe you do one row, um, or I shouldn't say row for row, we're gonna do two bars at a time on either side, but if you find that you need to do one bar on one side and two on another side because maybe you got off count at some point, you could do that as well. This is where you would do any sort of fudging. So let's go back. Again, for your length of yarn, you wanna do three times whatever the length is for your seam because you don't want to have to add yarn in later for a seam. It's better if it's all just one long length of yarn. And I'm going to leave the vent open with, like it's supposed to be, okay? So for you guys, that means down here where we have these really pretty rib stitches, we're not going to seam into those at all. We're gonna let those be. And you kind of have to unroll your work. Remember, you don't want to go into the column over here on the last row. I like to use this column right here, okay? This column. Some people I know will go in another column, totally up to you, I don't care. Whatever you do, just keep it consistent. All right, so let's join our yarn once again. I'm gonna come up from underneath, right above my ribbing. Come over here to the opposite side. I think my ribbing on this side's taller but we'll, that'll help us to fiddle around and mess with things a little. Things aren't perfect and that's okay. Alrighty, again, I'm just doing my figure eight. You guys see that, right? It's just a simple figure eight. Give it a nice close. Yeah, see my ribbing over here is smaller. That's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over here I'm gonna go in and I'm going up the column. See, I'm picking up two bars. Give it a pull. Come over here where I came out. Go in, go up that column, picking up two bars. Let me see, in where I came out, picking up two bars, and give it a pull. In where I came out, pick up two bars, give it a pull. In where I came out, pick up two bars and give it a pull. See how it looks like the knit stitch just once again. You can give that a nice pull closed and it's pulling together the seam. In where you came out and go up. Make sure you're only picking up two bars. Don't pick up more than two and pull. Most likely, none of you will have to make any sort of altercations or alter, alterations, not altercations, alterations. Um, you'll have the same number of rows on either side. But if not, all you could do, you could come over here and just pick up, pick up one bar, okay? Just like what we did when we did the sleeve. And then come over here and pick up two if that's what you need or vice versa. Whatever you need to do to make sure that it seams up nice and neat. But you can see there, look how nice that seam comes together. It's so pretty. It looks like I'm on the right track here. So I'm gonna keep going. Make sure I tend to accidentally pick up more than two bars. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna pick up one over here. And just to make sure they get evened up. Biggest thing, make sure you're in the same column, unless you have to jog over for some reason. And we're up here to the armpit. Bring it all together. Bring it on home, y'all. All right, so I'm right here. Give this a pull. Look how nice and clean that is. If once I tug that in, I wouldn't be able to see the green. Um, obviously my swatches don't match up. My, I have more ribbing over here than over here, but look at that, how pretty that is. So this is where you have to make another decision. If I continue on with my, my uh, seaming yarn here and I continue on seaming along the sleeve, I'm then, once again, having the end of my seam be down at my cuff. Or I can go ahead, tuck in my seam 
tail right now to the inside, right? Oh, it's all caught up. Caught up on something. Tuck my tail in in here and then rejoin for my sleeve down here and come this direction. And that's what I suggest you guys do, um, especially if you've never done seaming before. It's just a better way to hide any sort of mishaps you might have. But so far, so we have row for row right there for the body. We have stitch for stitch for the shoulder. And then we have stitch for row for the sleeve. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. All right, so Beverly Hess is asking, what's your rule of thumb before tightening the connection stitch? Um, do you mean like just tightening up the way? I tend to tighten it up like every inch or so. I don't like to go too far. Um, some yarns are not very strong, so if you go too far and give it a tug, you actually could break the yarn. So I try and go like about an inch and, and then give it a tug. That also allows me to be able to check out the work I'm doing and I'm able to better see if something isn't lining up. So for example, when I was doing the sleeve, if I had went much longer and, and I decided, mm, I don't really like the way that was turning out and had to rip out, I would have had to rip out more than what I did rip out. Um, so I just like to do about every inch and then I take a look. Plus it's so exciting to watch it zip together. Um, I love it, it's exciting. I mean, tell me I'm not the only one that finds that super exciting. I think it's cool. All right, so here we are. Here's my little, here's my little <laughs> Quasimodo sort of <laughs> sweater here. Um, I want to pull out this swatch here and I want to show you how to seam up the, um, the ribbing portion on this swatch for the sleeves. It's really not super difficult. You know what? No, I'm going to change my mind. No, that's what I want to do. That was my plan. I'm going to do that. I'm going to continue on with that plan. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Uh, any questions so far? I thought you said to do the sleeves first, then the side. Um, what I meant by that was you add the sleeves to the body and then we'll seam, seam the side and then underneath the sleeve. That's what I meant when I said that. Um, so what I meant by that was we were going to seam the, the shoulder and then we were going to seam the sleeves to the body and then I like to do the body to the armpit and then the, the out the cuff underneath the sleeve to the armpit okay you could do that reverse you could go from the cuff underneath the sleeve to the armpit and then go the body to the armpit either way it doesn't matter but you don't um yeah does that answer your question I think that answers your question let's see here Chris Omnin Omnin, Omnin, it says, uh, I've only made flat items and hats in the round. So grateful for your guidance. You are a super teacher. Oh, thank you. You're a super teacher. I cannot believe I got two sweaters done and I'm feeling much better about the seaming with this video. That's great. It's really not hard, guys. Seaming is so, I mean, you see me. I'm doing it right here. Um, it's not a difficult task. All right, so let's take a look down here and let's use this little sample as um, our guide for a sleeve. And the only reason I want to do that is I like the fact that I had different colors to show you, but it also has ribbing at the bottom so I can show you the ribbing portion. Um, and then in this, we're going to make believe that we need to jog over um, so that way you can see how... Um, if you, when you're doing the increases for your sleeve, you just want to make sure you're still staying along that line and the increases, if I'm thinking through this correctly, your increases are a stitch or two in from the edge. So you'll be able to, you don't want to seam on the increase. You're going to go right beside it. So as you have an increase and that increases your stitches out, you will jog your stitch, your, uh, tapestry needle over to make sure you're always on that side of the increase. It, it's really it's super easy. You guys, you'll get it. You'll get it. No problem. Let's use our trusty green, green thread here just for a little bit. And this is really just sort of overkill because it's already information I just showed you how to do. So you know how to do this already. Once again, you would want to join your yarn. So I like to come up. You could come up on the opposite side if you want. This is just habit for me. I always come up on the right side and then go to the left and then go back to the right and then I jump in. Just have it, I guess. 
All right. So over here, I'm going to go between. Now I can go this column if I wanted to, but see how that's right between that stitch and that stitch? I like to go between that column. So I'm going to choose that column right there and right there. Like this is really, you guys know how to do this. <laughs> I just showed you how to do this. It's super easy. And I'm just going two for two, seaming it up. Here's a little tip for those of you who like thumb holes. You could leave an opening here and have a thumb hole at your cuff here. You could have a thumb hole opening. You would just simply just leave it, uh, leave it open. Just make sure that your sleeves were long enough so that way you have a thumb hole. You could just leave that open and create a thumb hole. But then as you transition from your ribbing into your stockinette, it's still just row for row going to going in where I came out, going up, going to, and you just go across. Now say, I'm going to go in here, and say I decided that I wanted to jog across. Can you see what I mean? Like here's the column I'm in. Say I want to jog across to that column. I could do that. And then I could do the same over here. I could jog across over. See, I should, my needle should be coming out there but I've jogged across half a stitch, so I'm over there. And I could do that again. I could jog across half a stitch, so I'm see I'm over there. I should be here, but I'm there. Same thing. I should be here, but I'm there. I mean, that's, that's all it is. That's, that's jogging. So here, what this would do is it would start to pull in and I would have more and more fabric because I have, I'm leaving more fabric over here on the side. But as you have your increases and you jog out and, and along, you're actually not going to have more fabric on the inside because you're maintaining, you're maintaining that selvage edge because you know that you started with, let's say you started with 10, then you increased to 12, and by moving over that half a stitch, you're still maintaining that nice salvage edge, but now you have more fabric in the body. And then you went from 12 to 14, and so you move over that half a stitch, and now you have all those stitches in the body, but you still have the same salvage edge. Does that make sense? I mean, in, in my mind, I make complete, <laughs> complete sense, but I don't know if that I'm conversing that through correctly or not. So I'm going to ask you guys, it says you guys are getting it right. No problem. Um, thank you for your help. I love the colors of this swatch. This swatch here, this is Red Hearts with Love Stripes, I do believe. Um, it's really pretty. I like it a lot. And uh, thank you for showing the figure eight again. Yeah, I think I showed it like five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. And good video. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Everybody is saying thank you. Makes total sense. Um, oh, you guys are just making me so happy. So here's, here's what you need to do now. I don't know why I was ripping this out. It just happened, I guess. Um, I want you to finish your sweater. I want you to finish your sweater. I want you to weave in your ends and I want you to put that sweater on and send me a picture. Send it to me on Instagram, send it to me on Facebook, send it to me on Snapchat, I don't care. Hashtag Marley Bird, I will find your picture, I will smash your like button because I would love to be able to collect as many pictures of you guys wearing your sweaters as possible and do a collection, like a look what you made sort of video um, if, you, if you don't mind. So when you share your finished project with me, tell me, hey Marley, you can use this, this picture and I will, um, as long as I find it. I'll tell you if I'm gonna use it or not. But I would love to have a collection of all these beautiful sweaters that you guys are making. Um, and I don't care what yarn you use to make it, just send me your picture of you wearing it or whoever it is you made it for wearing it because um it's exciting it's so exciting i i'm getting like teary-eyed because i know I know what it's like to be fearful of making something and then taking that that leap, that that step out onto the skinny branch and and just trying it and then having the success of doing it is is it's thrilling. And as we get older in life and we realize not everything in life can be a complete success and this is a success, it's just it warms my heart that I was able to help you guys 
have success making a sweater, a really easy sweater, and hopefully a cute sweater you think. I think it's cute. And uh, yeah, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this knit along here uh, with Marley Bird, sponsored by Red Heart Yarns. I have truly enjoyed teaching all of you along the way. I love the idea of this live broadcast video because I'm able to answer your questions as we go along, and I find that really helpful. Um, hopefully you do too. In the video description, I'll be sure to include a link to Patty Lyons' uh, YouTube channel um, to any blocking information you might need and um, a link to the pattern, of course. And I can't think of anything else you might need from me right now. So I think that's, that's everything. Um, a lot of you are saying thank you for this video. You inspire me, Marley, you're the best. Oh, you guys just make, you just, you make my heart just pound. You just... Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, there you have it. That's it for the My First Sweater with Marley Bird Knit Along. I have had an amazing time teaching all of you. I hope that you have hit subscribe to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Click that bell button so that way you are notified whenever I go live or release a video. And last but not least, whenever you watch a video, make sure you smash that like button and leave me a comment saying, hey, Marley, so glad you're doing what you're doing. I'm very, very, very proud of you guys. And I hope to see you again on the next knit along or the next crochet along or in the next video. I will see you on Facebook for sure. Talk to you guys later. Bye.